and brought them out and said, Sons, what must I do to be saved? I want you to keep note of the words of the jailer. He uses two strong words. Number one, must. Number two, save. When the word must is used, simply means the most important and the only requirement. No plan B, no option B, because he's asking them, Sons, what must I? What must I? Is there anything that I must do so that I can go to heaven? Is there anything that I must do so that I can see the kingdom of God? Is there anything that I must do so that I don't go to hell? The word saved. He says, what must I do to be saved? The word saved simply means being delivered from the powers of eternal damnation. Never going to hell again. You know, when we are doing our soul winning, sometimes when we ask people what they understand by the word saved, people will give you different definitions. Others will tell you to be saved is to dress well. To be saved is to stop smoking. To be saved is to be a good person. To be saved is to pray every day. But brothers and sisters, even without referring to the scriptures, the word saved comes from the word save. It's an action. And only a powerful personality, a powerful subject, a powerful power can save you where you are helpless. Say for example, if I was in my house and my house was on fire, at that point in time, I cannot deliver myself. I am in risk of dying. What will happen unto me? I will begin screaming, calling for help. And whoever will come and secure me out of that trouble will be called my savior with regards to that situation. This man is asking Paul and Silas, what must I do to be saved? What is the requirement? The must requirement that I'm supposed to do so that I never go to hell. So if you are getting me right, this is the point. This is a man who is asking a question to Paul and Silas because he does not want to go to hell because of his sins. Number one, in that question, he realizes that he's in danger of going to hell. You know, when you begin to ask someone, what must I do to, to be saved? What must I do to go to heaven? It begins from you being informed that, hey, you are in danger. The probability, the chances of you going to hell are high. Any sin that you have ever committed in your life is enough to take you to hell. It's not about a big sin. It's not about a small sin. No. Any sin that you've ever committed in your life and you are still in that condition, you have not come to a point of asking Paul and Silas, what must I do to be saved? You have not come to a point of agreeing to speak to our soul winners, agreeing to speak to Pastor Paul, agreeing to look out for the truth. That sin is just enough to take you. <laughs> So what's your name? Abraham. Abraham. Yes. Have you trusted Jesus Christ as your savior? Yes. Hundred percent going to heaven? Yes. Okay. Based on your prof profession, I want you to based on the profession of your faith, I now baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit of God, buried in the likeness of his death, raised back to the newness of life. Amen. Okay, chini uingie kama umekachi. Hicho inaweza gonga. Utakuja kwa maji ni nyingi sana. Okay, so what's your name? Okay. Have you trusted Jesus Christ for your salvation? 100% going to heaven? Therefore, I need to close your nose. Based on the profession of your faith, I do baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit of God, buried in the likeness of Jesus Christ, based back in the name of life. Amen. Oh, my God.